Hey, Bastish B here for 64K and welcome to episode number three of Retro Remakes. So if you've never watched this show before, I take a look at remakes of classic computer and console games, official and unofficial. And the game we're going to have a look at today is Eye of the Beholder, originally released on DOS in 1991. We're going to be having a look at the Commodore 64 game, a remake that was released at the end of 2022. But before we look at that, let's go back to the original. Eye of the Beholder was a trilogy of dungeon crawlers with the first originally released in 1991 by SSI and was developed by Westward Associates, originally as an MS-DOS game and also ported to the Amiga, Sega CD, PC-98, Super NES and later the Game Boy Advance. It's a classic style RPG dungeon crawler set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. The story for the game revolved around the city of Waterdeep, hiring a team of adventurers with the task of descending beneath the city to discover the source of evil emanating within and destroy it. The game was directed by Brett Sperry who was the co-founder of Westwood together with Lewis Castle. He also created the massively influential real-time strategy series Command and Conquer. The game took place from a first person perspective as you search the sewers and dungeons discovering hidden treasure, fighting all manner of beasts and solving puzzles, each one getting you one step lower and closer to the beholder. You start off with a party of four which you can make yourself, wizards, warriors, elves, everything that makes fantasy gaming so much fun. You can also increase the team size to six overall by recruiting NPCs you find along the way. The game's rule set was based on the second edition of Dungeons and Dragons rules with its combat and magic all taking place in real time as you come across the creatures. Body formation and point and clicking options determine the outcome which require quick reactions to options and strategies to win. The game went down an absolute storm in publications at the time with Computer Gaming World saying a stunning, brilliant graphics and agonizingly tricky game. With both the DOS and Amiga versions being praised as being a huge leap forward in the genre and by mid-1991 the game had already sold over 150 50,000 copies. And you know how rampant software piracy was at that time so you can only imagine how many more people were playing it. On the down low, myself included, it was followed by two sequels, Legend of Dark Moon by Westwood themselves and Assault on Myth Draenor by publisher SSR. And now that you know a little bit about the origins, let's check out the new version. Eye of the Beholder was released on the Commodore 64 at the end of 2022 and was a game I was highly anticipating to play but due to the C64 onslaught of releases and the time needed to get into this, I just had to put it aside until now when I finally played it. Thank goodness it really lived up to all my expectations. This unofficial port of the DOS original was done by Andreas Larson and his team of Oliver Lindau on the graphics intro and more. He also worked on the excellent Sonic port we looked at on episode so too and the team of Lesch, Mirage and Two Follower on the sublimely detailed in-game graphics, plus the always reliable Linus giving the Sid interpretations of some classic tunes. The game has been in development for many years and it's so nice to see it finally released. Gameplay is exactly the same as the PC counterpart. All the real-time action, dungeon exploring and light puzzle solving is all intact. Nothing has been lost or discarded in this port. In fact, it's got even more options with the team's excellent implementation of an auto map feature which you can switch to at any time so no more need for pen and paper and this truly makes this game way more accessible. If you have a real Commodore 128 system you get even more with being able to hook up to a dual screen setup to have the map on one screen and the game on the other plus support for the 2 megahertz mode to speed things up. Having said that though the C64 version is pretty fast and responsive and plays well on a real system although you're gonna need a 1351 mouse to play it realistically. If you don't simply play it in VAS with a PC mouse, it works exceptionally well. If you've never played it before, it's 90% mouse driven with just a few simple keyboard strokes for map, bestiary and a help screen. So it's not too complicated at all. The game is pretty difficult though, especially in the beginning, so you better save it often. If you've never played the original, I'd highly suggest checking out a portion of a long play just to get the gist to help you understand the mechanics. Don't be overwhelmed, take your time. It's a game that really deserves to be explored fully. Graphically it's just beautiful, sometimes I even feel like I'm playing the Amiga version, it's that impressive. With its attention to detail 
and a lot of thought and planning has gone into its control scheme, which isn't a natural fit for the C64, but the team make it work very well overall. This is another landmark title for the C64 and is, without a doubt, the new benchmark for dungeon crawlers on the system. I'll leave a link to the developer's website as it contains lots of useful information on how to set up and play this game on all C64 related systems and emulation. I tested it on a real C64 with my Kung Fu Flash cartridge and it worked great but I don't have a mouse as I said earlier, so I was very limited as to what I could do. The C64 Maxi also works really well. The Mini is a no-go, I'm afraid, but Vice Emulation was the best for me for this game. So download it, it's free, and enjoy one of the greatest dungeon crawlers ever, now on your humble C64. And what a fantastic remake. If you want to download this, I'll leave the links in the description. The game is free. And if you haven't checked out the first two episodes, the first one's a remake of Rescue on Fractalus on the PC, and the second one is a remake of the Sega Master System version of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Commodore 64. Thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can please like and subscribe, they'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.